for one, greatness is being sown into you through the word. Y'all get great teaching here. That's a great seed. That's a that's great material to start with. Then y'all get taught and trained through greatness. You get you have great examples before you. You have all the great, and then most importantly, you have the spirit of the great one available to you to live inside of you. So. I want to draw your attention this morning to the book of Philippians. Philippians, the second chapter. And as of always, y'all will be stretched today. Y'all will be pushed today. Huh. I don't, um, I don't meditate. I don't meditate. I don't study. I don't sacrifice my time. I don't sacrifice my days studying the word of God, preparing myself. I don't live in holy to be available for God to use to come here and play. I don't do all that to come here and tickle your ears. <laughs> God can tickle your ears without consecration. I could tickle your ears without dedication. I could tickle your ears without all that other stuff. I could tickle your ears with wordplay. But I need the power. And I don't believe that God gives us his power or his authority to play games. Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to read into your hearing verses 1 through 7. I will be reading from the Amplified translation. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 2. Starting at verse 1. Therefore, make sure. <laughs> Therefore, if there is any encouragement and comfort in Christ, as there certainly is in abundance, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship that we share in the Spirit, if there is any great depth of affection and compassion, make my joy complete. By being of the same mind, having the same love toward one another, knit together in spirit, intent on one purpose, and living a life that reflects your faith and spreads the gospel. The good news regarding salvation through faith in Christ. Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, through mo factional motives or strife, but with an attitude of humility, being neither arrogant nor self-righteous, regard others as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Verse 5, for this same attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, Look to him as your example in selfless humility, who, although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God, as one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of deity, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped or asserted, as if, the, as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it, mm -mm -mm. but emptied himself without renouncing or diminishing his deity, but only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine equality and his rightful dignity by assuming the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. He became completely human, but was without sin, being fully God and fully man. I read it to your hearing. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 in the Amplified Translation. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, hope, and strength. We thank you for protection. We thank you for instruction. We thank you for your love, your patience, your kindness that you extend to us every minute, every second. Every second is a second we walk in your grace. Every second is a second we walk in your favor. Every second is a second that we are impacted by your agape love moving and flowing and working in our lives. And for that, we thank you, Father God. 
And Father God, we pray right now, if there's anything unlike you in our lives, expose it, reveal it, and remove it. Forgive us from any sin of omission, commission, and poor disposition. Anything that we did that we didn't know of, things that we didn't know, and we chose to do the wrong thing anyway, Father God. Lord, forgive us, Father God. Convict us, Father God. Do not allow us to be comfortable with those ways that do not please you living in us, Father God. Oh, help us, Father God. Help us, deliver us from those areas. Help us to desire more than forgiveness. Give us hearts to repent and turn away from those behaviors that hinder us and that cause us to stumble, Father God. Father God, now we pray that you open our eyes, that we behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Open our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today finds good ground, takes root, grows and blossoms, and produces fruit of righteousness in our lives for your glory. Now let me decrease and you increase. Hide me behind the cross, speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord, Savior, Redeemer, and Friend. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Praise God. So, the book of Philippians, right? The book of Philippians. The book of Philippians is a book that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Philippi. And he wrote this specific book to the church of Philippi in response to a gift that the church had sent him. Mm -hmm. yeah. The book is filled with joy and appreciation and encouragement to those in Philippi who shared a special relationship mm -hmm. with the Apostle Paul. Now a lot of theologians, people who study the Bible, they believe that the Church of Philippi financially sponsored Paul as he journeyed throughout the area. And because of their willingness to sow into Paul, watch this, so that Paul could go to, not Philippi, mm -hmm. but to Ephesus. Right, right. So that Paul could go to Corinth. Mm -hmm. So that Paul could go to Galicia. So, so that Paul could go to all those other places. Philipp Philippi didn't benefit from Paul's preaching down yonder, mm. but they believed in Paul. Right. Yeah. And they wanted those other cities and those yeah. other countries to have the opportunity to benefit from the wisdom and the mantle yeah. that Paul carried the same way they did. So they counted it not robbery to invest in someone else's deliverance. Mm. This ain't even the message. But I want you to understand that because they were willing to sponsor mm -hmm. Paul's assignment, mm -hmm. Paul comes back and blesses them with this letter. Mm -hmm. See, 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 they were concerned about someone else. And Paul said, because you were concerned about me and someone else, God, I, I'm now, because I'm an apostle, I'm a child, I'm going to now pronounce a blessing on you, and I want to share some things with you. So that's what the whole book of Philippians mm -hmm. deals with, just in case. And um, I just like that concept that he was moved mm -hmm. by the giving mm -hmm. of the church of Philippi. Mm -hmm. he, Philippi gave first, mm -hmm. and that inspired him. I love that because when we give God without looking for God to give in return, when we just give God mm -hmm. because God has already been so good, when we just give God because we understand that he is worthy of the praise, when we yeah. just give God our very best yeah. worship or our very best sacrifice. Yeah. When we just give God, I believe, man, it's, 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 it's Mother's Day, but it's something when a child just runs up to their parents and hugs them for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's something that, like, what, what's that? It's just, it's just because I love you. Yeah. It's something, I mean, it's something amazing when a son or a daughter just out of the blue shows love yeah. for them, and, 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 and it makes that parent could have been mad at that child. Yeah. And, and sometimes that's how the kids get over, right? Yeah. The kids get over because they know they're in trouble. They'll be like, I love you. And then it's, you, you can't stay mad as right, you want right. to be. Yeah. You can't stay upset as you want to be. But, 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 I, but I like that principle in work here because how much more is God prone to shower us with more when we just come to him not seeking anything just let him know i love that see that's why my worship gets the way it is because i know he's worthy i, I know he's great when i live in a city like philadelphia people are 
dropping like flies. Yes. 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 And yet here I stand. Yes. When people are looking for a way to meet their means and say, here, I, I have more than enough. Yes. Yes. And, and I don't work like that, y'all. <laughs> I, I work, but I don't, I don't need I don't have no fortune. I don't mind at the, the FMC Comcast. Yes. I'm not in those big glass giant buildings. That's not what I do. But God. I can't help but say, yeah, you wake up in the morning like, you awesome, Dad. You awesome, man. Father. Yeah. I like that principle in play because I believe that God works with us, his children, mm -hmm. the same way. Okay. And that ain't even what I'm here to talk about today because I'm not really here to talk about giving. But I'm talking today about getting. I'm going to talk about getting. Um, many of you may or may not be familiar with the hip-hop genre of music. Um, there was a, there is a rapper, his name is Nas. His name is Nas. If you have any type of familiarity mm -hmm. with hip-hop music, you should have at least heard of Nas. Right, right. And in Nas's first album, he had a song, it was called A New York State of Mind. Mm -hmm. And the lyrics in that song, right, described his behavior mm -hmm. and his choices that he made in response to the environment that he was in and what he needed to do to survive the various challenges that he faced every day living in New York. Mm -hmm. Whether it was carrying a pistol or dealing with some unsavory people, you know, being on the lookout for people who may want to rob him or undermine him, mm -hmm. but he had a mentality that he created so that he could survive mm -hmm. in New York City. Mm -hmm. And the name of the story was New York State of Mind. And okay. we, all of us, we too have a mind, right? right? That influences the way we respond to the environment so we can survive the various challenges that we face every day. Right. Yeah. We have a way that we think so that we can teach my son. Look both ways before you cross the street. Right, right, right. Cross on the green, yeah. not in between. Yeah. I'm trying to get those principles instilled in his mind so he can survive right. walking the street, right? Right, right? And so we grow up in a world and we develop that state of mind based upon our experiences, our environment, the other people that are around us. But unfortunately for us, that state of mind will not help us to survive the various challenges to the extent of us overcoming and triumphing as God designed us to do. Right. Right. The worldly state of mind will only get us so far. Right. 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 For that to occur, we need more than the car carnal mind right. Right. that we are born with. Right. So when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, yes. <laughs> When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we become new creations. Yes. Old things are passed away. Yes. Behold, all things become new. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. Y'all don't have to turn here, but if you're taking notes, you can just write that down. So when we become new creations, that includes our mind. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Our mind. Amen. Our mind becomes new. If you want a theme for today's conversation so you can kind of zone in on where we're going, the theme for today's conversation would be a sonship state of mind. A sonship state of mind, right? The text in its entirety has a lot to unpack. And we're going to unpack some of it, but I, don't, I want you to focus on verse 5 where it reads, Have the same attitude in yourselves which was in Christ Jesus look at him yeah. as your example in selfless humility a sonship state of mind mm -hmm. because when it's all said and done the goal for us is to think like Christ Amen. we want to be like Jesus Amen. the son of God mm -hmm. and to get the same thinking that Christ possessed so we can represent the Father the way that Christ represented the Father as his Son. Mm -hmm. So we can triumph like Christ. In order to accomplish that, we need the mind of Christ. We need a sonship state of mind. Right. The Apostle Paul begins the text, right? He begins the text and listing the first part of a two-part equation. Y'all stick with me right now. 
Paul says, if there be. That's how he starts. He said, if there be. And I love how Paul sets us up. Because Paul sets us up and he sets us up with things that he already knows the answer for. So that he gets us leaning in the direction that he wants us to go. He says, if there be, followed by a list of things that he knows there is. Y'all catch this later. He, he, he says, if there be, and then he tells them things that he knows there is. He names encouragement in Christ. We all know that right, right. in Christ there is encouragement, right? He says, is there any, if there be any comfort in Christ? We already know, like he's asking like they gotta think about it, but they already know that there is comfort in Christ. He says, is there any consolation in love? Like he, he gets them leaning. He gets them leaning in the direction that he wants them to go. Oh, Paul, Paul, Paul was a tactician with how he shared the word of God, right? And then, like, he adds at the end, if there is any affection and compassion. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Jesus <laughs> is love. I know. You know there's a compassion yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and affection in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he said, if any of those things be true, we already know right. if this was a true false test, all we had to do was mark the T. Yeah, when we would just yeah. pass with shining colors. He said, they could make his joy complete with one more gesture. Verse 2, he says, be of the same mind. <laughs> he leads them into this. He's like, well, y'all could just, y'all could make my joy complete if you just be of the same mind, having the same love towards one another, knit together in spirit intent on one purpose and living a life that reflects your faith and spreads the gospel, mm -hmm. the good news regarding salvation through faith in Christ. I love this text, y'all. Mm -hmm. I love this text because in this text, y'all y'all just pay attention. I'm, I, I want y'all to get it and I really want to keep it simple because Paul is not minimizing or discrediting the relationships that they have with one another. He's not saying that Y'all fellowship is null and is not important. Right. Mm -hmm. He's not minimizing their interactions and treatment. He said all that stuff prior to. So he's letting them know that the love and the compassion and the fellowship, those things are important as well. He says that. He's not reducing the importance of what they have been doing. He's not reducing the importance of Bible study. Yeah. Right. He's not reducing the importance of prayer. Right. He's not reducing the importance of assembling together mm -hmm. in worship right. and right. service. Right. He's not reducing any of those things. He's saying that, but he's also emphasizing that it is of greater importance for the people to have the mind of Christ. Yes, yes, yes. yes. If we come together and have good church and don't have the mind of Christ. Come on. Mm -hmm. Right. If we give all of our money but don't have the mind of Christ, if we feed the people in the street, if we clothe the naked but don't have the mind of Christ, those things are good. But without the mind of Christ, without a sonship state of mind, what are we doing? What are we doing? Because there's other people out in the world. The NAACP does the same thing. They don't have. They're not moving. With the kingdom agenda. Right, right, right. The NAACP isn't out there helping people so that they can give their lives to Jesus. You have to have, ooh, help me, Holy Spirit, a sonship, state of mind. Verse 5, he makes it plain saying, have the same attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus. Look to him as your example of selfless humility. Selfless humility. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 6 continues saying, who, although, I, I, I just have to do this part, y'all. Who, although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God, the Amplified adds, as one with him, possessing fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature and deity, he did not regard equality as, with God as a thing to be grasped or asserted. I, that, that, that whole verse sounds real tricky. Mm -hmm. It sounds real tricky. Let me let me let me give it to you where you can reach it. Because this is the mind of Christ that we need to embrace. Jesus is God. Amen. Amen. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm, I, but I got to see that bold with a straight yeah. face. Because some I I I am not this, this isn't an eggshell thing for me. 
I'm not, you know, I'm not doing a balancing act, worried about who I'm about. Jesus is God. Amen. It says, but Jesus didn't feel like he had to prove he was God. Right, right, right. <sighs> Jesus didn't have to put on a show for everyone to know that he was God and he was the son of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not have an identity crisis. He knew who he was. Amen. He didn't have to prove it to anybody. Amen. This was the sonship state mm -hmm. of mind. He, he, he didn't feel like he would lose his deity mm -hmm. by, by humbling himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, like Jesus didn't feel like his gifts and his abilities and his power would somehow fall off of him right. because he humbled himself. Somebody needs to hear that. Amen. God created you and designed you with gifts. He knew Hallelujah. you before he formed you in your mother's womb. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. So you don't have to worry about being humble if you can sing. You still can sing. Right. Yeah. Right. You don't have to worry about being humble if you can dance. You ain't going to stop learning how you gonna stop learning how to dance because you humble yourself. Oh, I'm a, my goodness, I'm, I'm talking to myself. You, just, just because you humble doesn't mean you're going to be slower if you're an, a track runner. Right. Just because you're humble doesn't mean you're going to unlearn how to dunk or catch a football because you're humble. We gotta get yes. Amen. a sonship state of yes. mind. We keep looking at this text. It's just more of the same. Verse seven. Jesus didn't have to prance around. Jesus didn't prance around like, look at me, I'm Jesus. <laughs> look at me, I got power. Yes. He gave up the outward expression of his deity mm. yes. to do the will of the Father. Yes. He gave up the outward expression of his deity yes. to point people to God, yes. not himself. This was the mind of Christ. This was the sonship state of mind. Christ was not bigger than the assignment. Amen, amen, amen. Let that, let that just marinate on, on, on your temple for a second. Christ was not bigger than the assignment. The assignment wasn't about Jesus, y'all. Oh my goodness, somebody might think I'm a heretic right now. Wow. So my, the assignment wasn't about Jesus. The assignment was about relationship with all of humanity. Yeah. Jesus yeah. came so that we Right, 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 right. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Jesus came so that we could have yeah. life more abundantly. Yeah. Right. Jesus right. didn't come so that they could have a parade for him, even though he got a parade. Right. Jesus, right. Jesus didn't come so that they could worship him, even though they were like, Hosanna, Hosanna. <laughs> Jesus never allowed the assignment to yeah. be about him because he had a sonship state of mind. Jesus always reminds us that what he was doing was to do the will of who? The God. Father. The will of God the Father. Yeah. He always reminds because you know what? He had a sonship king. Um, he had a sonship state of mind. He, yeah. he knew he was king of kings. Mm -hmm. He knew he had a seat right next to God at the end of eternity. Yes, yes. He knew yes. that he could call down angels. Yes. Yes. He, <laughs> yes. he knew who he was. He had yes. that thing ingrained in him. Yes. He didn't need the approval of anybody. Yes. Jesus, still performing miracles for God to get the glory. Still walking on water for God to yes. get the glory. Hallelujah. Still speaking to storms for Hallelujah. God to get the glory. Yes, because he was on assignment yes. to leave a blueprint of yes. sonship for yes. future sons of God yes, to follow and being capable of doing Hallelujah. so once they obtain yes. the sonship state of mind, which is the mind <laughs> of Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. The point is that Jesus didn't caught up, Jesus didn't get caught up mm -hmm. getting the credit or the glory for the miracles. Yeah. 
Mm. Jesus knew who he was. Hallelujah. Son of the Father. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't have to prove it to anyone. Mm. Least of all, the Father. Mm. <laughs> How often do we waste so much time trying to prove to God mm. that we're worthy? Yeah. How often do we spend time doing stuff mm -hmm. to prove to God? That we are his sons, that we are worthy of mm. you can't listen, salvation is the gift of God from grace alone. Yes. Nothing yes, you can yes, do is nothing you can yes. say to earn it. Yes. So we can't prove to God. We just need to embrace. And we can't prove to our look, oh my goodness. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We can't prove to ourselves that we deserve the goodness. Yeah. We can't work ourselves out of the hole that sin placed us in from day one. We can't keep we can't keep doing stuff, doing stuff, thinking that, okay, God, I, I the Bible speaks of it. There's going to be people that says, I prayed for you, God. I, I preached for you. You know, I served you. He's going to be, depart from me. I know you're not because you did all of that stuff and you never embraced your identity as a son that I said you was when you were, when you became a new creation. Yeah. That new creation is a son of God. And in order to really embrace that thing, we have to get a sonship yes. state of mind. Yes. Mm. We need the sonship state of mind. The state of mind that is not trying to prove your position because mm. you already know your identity as a child of God. Yes. What we need is a state of mind that promotes the father's purpose about that promotes the father's purpose rather above Personal pride, position of power. Mm. God's purpose has to be greater than our pride, great about, greater than our own desires for ourselves, mm. greater, about, uh, greater than trying to get any power that this world... Mm. I can't even finish the thought, because this world ain't really got no power to give. Right. All power comes from God. Yeah. This world, this world, this world, this world. Y'all ever, ever, ever play with firecrackers? When you was growing up, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, ever play fire? you ever light one and it's just, it, it's a dud? Yeah. You go with the, that's the power, that's the kind of power growth guy. Yeah. Yeah. Then you got power, yeah. but then when you go for it, you be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got no power? All power yes. comes from God. Yes. Man, verse 8 states that Jesus humbled himself. The sonship, the, the sonship state of mind makes us take self-inventory. Mm-hmm. It makes us operate and perform self-regulation mm. as it pertains to vanity, ego. The sonship state of mind takes authority over pride and self-righteousness. Mm. The sonship state of mind chooses to exercise the fruit of the spirit known as mm. self-control mm. to remain humble, yes. which requires mental and emotional strength. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. See, when you have the sonship state of, state of mind, see, we, we get so caught up, me and Bishop, I, I, I love just talking to Bishop about this, because I said, you know, everybody, we get hype about, you know, the fruit of the spirit, joy. Right, and we right, get hype right. and excited about the fruit of the spirit, peace. Mm -hmm. And we get hype and excited about the fruit of the spirit, love. Right. And, but, but, but when someone asks you, how's your patience growing? Mm -hmm. my, my, my patience is growing weary. <laughs> that, that, like, that's, that's not good because if that's a fruit of the spirit right. uh, how, how's your long suffering growing uh, oh <laughs> how's your temperance growing we don't nobody preaches on the necessity for those fruits of the spirit right but they are listed as fruits of the spirit for right, a reason right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and it, it, it requires mental and emotional discipline yeah. and strength yeah. to be humble yeah. to fight your tongue oh Oh, oh. Well, to, to say what God tells you to say instead of what the flesh wants you to say. It takes, the, it takes temperance and self-control to say God bless you when you want to really call them the words and they bleep out. It takes a sonship state of mind to do that self inventory, yes. to be like, I need to work on this. Mm -hmm. I need to operate and use some self control right here mm -hmm. because this is not consistent mm -hmm. with what Father mm -hmm. would have me to do, with what Father would have me to say. If you had a child and your child was acting up in the street and you found out as their parent 
and you know that that is not what you instilled in them in the home, mm -hmm. you'd have some very sharp words for them. Yeah. Uh -huh. You'd have some very sharp words for them. And a part of the reason that my behavior was the way that it was is because I got to a point in my growth that I didn't want to bring shame and embarrassment upon my father's name. Right, right, right. right. So that when people saw me, they'd be like, that's so-and-so's boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the report would be good. You want me, want me, can, I, can I be honest here? Because there were so many times when the report came that weren't good. Right. And there were so many times when people were like, do you know what your son is out there doing? <laughs> do you know what your son is <laughs> Why is your son with my daughter? <laughs> like, 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 seriously, there's so many times yeah. where I did things that did not look like my upbringing. Yeah. So now if I'm a new creature, I have a new upbringing and I have a new relationship, yeah. I have a new identity yeah. Yeah. as a son of God, my behavior has to shift. And in order for my behavior to shift, I need a sonship mm. state of mind mm. that includes discipline, yeah. that in that includes patience, yes. that includes long suffering toward my brothers and my sisters, mm -hmm. just as they mm -hmm. suffered with me when I was acting a donkey in the streets. Right. <laughs> Listen, y'all, your mind is one of the most powerful things you possess. Yes. Amen. Your mind Amen. is one of the most powerful things you possess. And that is why you have to protect it from the things that will compromise its mm. original function. Mm. Your imagination, for example, right. it can create scenarios yeah. mm -hmm. that impact your judgment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can just let your mind wander sometimes, yeah. Yeah. and the next mm -hmm. thing you know, you're eating that ice cream that you had no business having. Because <laughs> it got inside your mind. Mm -hmm. And even though you had these health goals, your imagination took you to a place yes. in your mind and where the mind wanders, the body will follow. Uh -huh. yeah. Mind is a powerful thing. Oh, y'all, I, I, I must be talking about me. The mind, you know you need to get out of bed and go to work, but your mind says you're tired. Right. You can stay there for another 10. You know you need to go to bed to get up early, but you need to watch one more episode. This show is getting good. Mind is powerful. <laughs> the mind is powerful. You don't have to have nobody else there talking. The mind can communicate with you and make you do some things. Right. So you have to control your thoughts. The mind is so powerful mm. that the mind can instruct your body to release different hormones mm -hmm. to respond and compensate for external stimuli. Like, like adrenaline. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're out on the street, you hear gunshots fire. Why do you think? Right, right, right. Yeah. That's the mind's response. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't even realize it, but now you're ready. You know you can't run that fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know you ain't. <laughs> you know you can't jump that high. <laughs> you know you struggle to get out the bed in the morning. But the mind responds because the mind is so powerful and it's so e it's it's influenced by everything that's going on around you. Right, right, right. You gotta protect your mind. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Because when you shift how you think and how you process stuff, the same stimuli will cause you to respond differently. Mm. The same stimuli will call, cause you to respond differently when, you're, when you change your mind. When I had a car on mine, I would love to look at porn. Right. But nothing wrong with it. I got, I'm just keep it real. Mm -hmm. I'm just going. <laughs> Come on. But when my mind changes. Yeah. Come on now. Right, right, right. Yeah. Things I used to do. I don't do no more. <laughs> Places I used to go. I don't go no more because the mind that the same thing is there. Yes. But I'm a new creation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I can't go there in my mind because if I go there in my mind, where the mind goes, the body will follow. The body will follow. So, question, because you got to protect your mind. You got to protect the sources of information. So, are you receiving the information into your mind as someone who is under the divine care of the sovereign God of the universe? Or is everything 
that comes in your mind filtered through your self-centered desires. Wow. When you see stuff, or when you hear stuff, mm -hmm. are you responding to it or are you processing it like you are someone that is under the care of the divine, sovereign, all-powerful, all-knowing creator of the universe? Are you receiving what this world is constantly bombarding you with mm. like you're a son of God? Mm. Or like you're just somebody trying to live their best life? Oh. You got to understand, as the, redeemed of the, your, the, as the redeemed of the Lord, you're the former, not the latter. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. As a son of God, daughter of God, as a child of God, you are under the divine care of the sovereign creator of the universe. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. So when the economy goes bad, it doesn't matter. You're not under the care of the economy. You're under the care of the divine right. sovereign right, creator hallelujah. of the universe. So when a pandemic hits the world, you're wise, but you don't worry like the world worries because you're yeah. not under the care of Pfizer. Right. You're not under the care of Bristol Myers Squibb. Right. You're not right. under the care of Moderna. Right. You're under the care of the divine sovereign creator of the universe. Uh, Your yeah. mind has to change. Yeah. So you can't yeah. be in fear just because everybody else around you is in fear yeah. because right. everyone else around you isn't under the care of the divine yeah. sovereign yeah. creator. Yes. Yes. of the universe yes. you have to constantly cultivate that mindset because with that mindset you will be able to execute the will of the father and also I might add in order to do the will of the father you must know the will of the father right. and the will of the father must become our overall main objective yes. God's will should always be on our mind Amen. Yeah. Amen. God's will should always be on our mind yeah. God's will should always be on our mind more of him and less of the world should Amen. be on our mind that's yeah. it Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Isaiah 26, 6 states that God will keep him. Because I'm trying to show y'all how to get a sonship state of mind. Isaiah 26, verse 6 reads, God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed or focused on the Father. Right? Because when our mind is stayed and focused on the Father... It's an indicator of trust in the Father. Yes. Yes. When our mind is stable, when people say, are you worried about X, Y, and Z? Like, no, God got it. Because my mind is focused on Him. Amen. Because Amen. everything else that the world throws at us is a distraction to pull us away from yes. Him. Uh, so when I'm focused yes. on Him, yes. I'm not worried about the storm at the sea. Because I got the Father with me. Right. I'm not worried about... What bills may come. I got the come on, I don't, I'm not worried about the sound that my car is making or how much it's going to cost. I know that that's just a moment. If God, I, I'm focused on the Father. God, if you're allowing this to happen, you must have a plan for it. Yeah. I didn't do nothing crazy. I wasn't out here being disobedient. I wasn't out here running amok. This happened. You, sovereign, divine, creator of the universe, saw this before I ever got the call. Yeah. Yeah. Saw this before I ever got the sickness. Saw this before I ever got the house. Yeah. Saw this before yeah. I ever yeah. got the job. Saw this before I ever entered the relationship. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm doing my very best because I have a sonship state of mind and I don't allow situations that are similar to what I experienced when I was not born again cause me to relapse into that old way of thinking. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. I got to maintain yes, yes, yes. my discipline with my sonship yes, yes, state yes. of mind. Yes, yes. I keep my focus on him. Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6. Proverbs 3 verse 5 through 6. It reads, trust in the Lord, in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding verse 6 says in all my some in all not most 
in all, oh, not just when I feel like it, not not when my attitude is right, in all, not just Sunday morning when pastor looking at me to make sure that I'm right, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall, not might, not could, not possibly, but when I acknowledge him, he shall direct my path. I got to have that sonship state of mind that I want God to do lead me yeah. where I want to go where yeah. he wants me to go. Yeah. God is never going to lead you someplace yeah. that you don't need to be over here. Right. Like, listen, listen, listen. Right. The psalmist said it's so sweet in, a, in one of the psalms that we all know about. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound like the place to be. That doesn't sound like it's lit at all. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Guess what? I got a sonship state of mind, so I don't feel no evil because thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, thou comfort me. He prepare a table for me in the midst of these people who hate me, in the midst of these people who don't like me, in the midst of these people who despite me. Steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord. Yes. Yes. Even if you find yourself in the valley of your shadow of death, if you're the good man and he ordered you there, he got a table for you. And when you walk through that place, even though it looked like the valley of the shadow of death, when you come out, surely goodness and mercy. Imagine! <laughs> Listen, imagine walking into the valley of the shadow of death and walking out and goodness and mercy following you. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 When you got that sunship, when you got that sunship state of mind, you don't worry about where God's sending you. Because you have confidence and trust that if he sent you there, there's a purpose for you and there's provision for you and there's power for you. And there's everything you need waiting where he sits you. Yes. Yes. We trust him. Thank you. Yes. It's a sonship state of mind. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, Proverbs. Jesus. Thank Proverbs. Oh, I skipped 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians talks about, watch this, chapter 10, verse 4 through 6. Y'all know this one. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Watch verse 5. Because we like that first part. Sometimes we overlook the second part. Casting down imaginations. Oh my goodness. That sonship state of mind. You can help you cast down the uh, imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Father. As it says God, I know, but I'm, I'm going to make it so you get it. Because if it tries to exalt itself above the name of my Father, then as his son, I got to cast that thing. Oh man, did y'all catch that? Then as his son, his mother. No, 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 no. Father says homosexuality is wrong. I cast it down. Right, In the right. name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Father says healing is the children's Amen. bread. So I cast down, hallelujah, sickness in the name of Jesus. I got a sonship. State of mind. Hallelujah. My God. Proverbs. So say, oh, y'all thought I was going to talk to y'all. The other thing I had in scripture. No, no, no. I'm going to show you in the word because we need a sonship. The state of mind. <sighs> Proverbs 23 7 is basic. Basic in the, as a man thinketh. So is it. Do you think you're a son? Or don't you? Do you think you're the redeemed of the Lord? Or don't you? Stop saying you're a sinner saved by grace. Come on. Come on. I'm a child of the Most High God. Yes. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. Yes. I'm the bride of Christ. Yes. Preparing myself for his return. Come on. Yes. The mind, the mind, the mind is the arena we must yes. constantly safeguard from the infiltration of the enemy. We must start treating our mind. Like it's holy ground. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 You have to start treating your mind My like it's Lord. holy yes. ground. Yes. Stop yes. allowing filth, filth, um, filthy communication, yes. conversations. Yes. You're going to be exposed to them. Right. It had, people are going to talk about stuff. They're going to walk, especially in this life. If we're going to, you know, reach the lost, you're right. going to be exposed to some things right. that are not of God. Right. Right. But you don't, you don't take them in. You don't internalize them. You don't begin to entertain those things. Amen. Maybe that witch 
Maybe that warlock, maybe that sorcerer, maybe that tarot card reader, maybe that, maybe there was some. No, you don't start entertaining the foolishness. Oh, I know. Maybe a little horoscope every once in a while won't hurt. Right? Yes, it will. Right? <laughs> you start treating your mind like it's holy ground. If you had a white carpet in your house, would you let people walk in there with muddy shoes on? No. 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 Treat your carpet better than you treat your mind. Okay. Oh, I'm stop. Oh, I'm stop. Oh, oh. I'm stop. Come on. You have to guard the gateways yes. that give access to the mind. Yes. Proverbs 4, 20 through 27. I'm not going to read all of it because I, I know I'm going a little bit long, y'all. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those who find them and health to all their flesh. Mm. Mm. You got to guard the gateways that give access to your mind. And you have to evict the thoughts and ideals and beliefs that are in conflict with God's will. You have to protect your eye gate, you have to protect your ear gate, and you have to evict the things that somehow have gotten in you. Maybe they were from birth, maybe they were from trauma, maybe they were from upbringing, and when you got saved and gave your life to Christ, those things begin to bubble up from friends and family who knew you back then. And they would start to remind you, hey, remember when we used to do so and so? Oh, those was good times. Hey, you remember such and such? Yeah, she was asking about you. But we have to evict those beliefs that conflict with God's will, right? Purge, fi I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> Psalm 51, <laughs> verse 7 through 14. And it talks in a, and, uh, David saying, purge me with his song. Yes, and I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. snow. Make yeah. me yeah. to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide my face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. We have to evict the beliefs that are in conflict with God. The first thing you got to do is admit you have something inside of you that is in conflict with God. No, it's not okay. No, 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 God does not. God, just because God understands doesn't mean God accepts. Amen. 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 Wow. Just because God understands doesn't mean God accepts. Mm -hmm. God understands that you have some leaven in your lump, but he also says a little leaven destroys the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to destroy the whole thing, so we got to get rid of that little bit of leaven. Right. right. I always tell the story. I shouldn't tell the story on Mother's Day, but I'm going to tell it on Mother's Day. Um, my, there was a phone. I was at my mom's house call and out. the phone rang. Call her out on Mother's Day. Hi, Mom. Love you. Uh, uh, there was a phone call on my mom. And, and I was at my mom's house and it was for her. It was a telemarketer, somebody. And um, I answered the phone. I said, hello. And it was like, yeah, can we speak to your mom? Well, I won't put her name out there. Your mom. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, Mom, such a so close. He's like, tell him I'm not here. I said, I ain't lying for you. Mm. I was like, she's not coming to the phone right now. Call back later. You know, I'm like, I'm not telling a little white lie. That's a little leaven. Now, I know that's an extreme, but the reality is I had a conviction and a check in me. I was like, that's a lie. I'm right, right, right. not doing that. Okay. It ain't got nothing to do with whether or not I love my mom. I love my relationship with God more. Yeah, now, I got, now, now just because you ain't want to talk to these people, now I got to go repent, Mom. Right. Uh, how many times we have to repent because we got persuaded and we got we got we got we we, we got influenced by somebody else. We got persuaded and influenced by someone else and we didn't sin. And now we gotta get our relationship back intact with God. Mm -mm. That was that wasn't even part of the message. Praise God. Oh what I say. Gotta guard your gateways to the mind. You got to evict the thoughts and ideals and beliefs that are in conflict with God's will. Get the sonship state of mind. And you must focus your attention on what God says is important. Mm -hmm. Amen. You have to focus your attention on what God says is important. Stop being distracted by the stuff that the world tries to tell you is important. Yeah, we want the Sixers to win. But the reality is, we got to focus on what's important to God. Joshua 1 Verse 8 says, this book of the law shall not depart out my mouth, 
But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe and do according to all that is written therein. For thou shalt make, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Psalms one, verse two says, "But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate night and day." We make it more complicated than it really has to be. The truth of the matter is. We don't have to reinvent the will. We just have to know his will and follow it. We're so busy trying to rewrite God's will. Ooh, we're so busy trying to write ourselves into God's will. You ever, you ever, you ever, you ever hear a story of someone passing away and then they go read the will and people's name ain't in it. And they try to put themselves in it. No, 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 no. If you was in the will, your name would be there. Even better, if you was in the will, you'd be in the will. Yes, yes. If, we're yes. If, if you're in the will, you're mm -hmm. in the place where God would have you to be. A lot of times people are eliminated from a natural will because they're not walking in the desires and the expectation of the one extending the inheritance. Come on. <laughs> you ain't getting nothing because when I was alive, you didn't do anything to show me. The investment that I made in you was appreciated. But when we walk and do the Father's will, y'all ain't, ain't got to reinvent the will, y'all. <laughs> we just got to do the will. We have to embrace the will. And what's the will? That we be sons. Mm -hmm. right. Jesus died so that we can have relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So that he can be Abba to all, to all of us. Yes. The, the, the will of God is for us to be his sons and mm -hmm. to and to behave like sons on earth as Jesus is now behaving in heaven. Mm -hmm. The sonship state of mind is, Jesus, help us to be like you were. Yes. Yes. But not just by doing the stuff, right? But by having the mentality that you had when you were here. Mm -hmm. That even when you were being persecuted, that even when you were being beaten, that even when you were being rejected, that even when you were being spat upon, when even when you were being lied on, when even you were being falsely accused, how you handled it. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to, and in order to do that, you have to have a sonship state of mind. I don't want y'all to miss it. Don't just be doing the humble thing because that's what Jesus did. That, but right. but it because that could eventually you can burn out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, come on now. Eventually you can burn out. Mm -hmm. But when you understand why, Ugh. when you understand Jesus' is why, and Jesus' is why was because he was a son. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus had those moments where everything seemed like cool. let me let me let me let me take a step back. So when we have those moments where everything seems like it's closing in on us mm -hmm. and bearing us mm -hmm. and the pressure mm -hmm. and the stress of yeah. life gets to us. The Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verses 8 through 9 reads and he gives us some instructions. He says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good re." If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think mm -hmm. those that mind again. Mm -hmm. Think on these things. Both the things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. The problem Amen. is we don't magnify God in the midst of our storms. We don't mm -hmm. magnify right. God in the midst of our battle. We don't magnify God in the midst of our adversity. We magnify the diagnosis of the doctor. Right. We, we, magnify, we magnify how did this bill get so high. Uh, we magnify how terrible it is in the streets. Uh, we magnify what's going on in the other countries. We magnify everything that we see and we be like, what's going on? We don't focus on the things that are good. We don't focus on the on things now. that are right. We don't focus on the things that are true. Uh, because we take our focus off of God mm -hmm. and begin to process things with the mind of man mm -hmm. instead of having that sonship state of mind. Right. The reality is we do live in a day and age where things look bad. Right. But the sonship state of mind to me says God said this was going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
We, we live in a day and age where there's a whole lot of nonsense and madness going on in the schools. But the sonship state of mind in me says, but well, what did you think would happen when you took prayer out of school? Mm. All right. See, 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 right, see, see. Right. See, when you have a sonship state of mind, you are able to see the world as God sees the world. Oh, mm. man. That was that was that was I wasn't expecting it to just come straight to you like that. See, but but but, but we so we we so busy trying to be straddling that fence, and we can't. We have to remember mm -hmm. who God is to us. Yes. And let me tell you something. That's going to give you the hope you need. That sonship state of mind. That's going to give you the hope you need. This verse says, "Focus on the things which are good and honest." If I was overseer branch, I would say, "When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done, He overseer branch, and all that He's done for me." But since I'm not overseer branch, <laughs> I'll say, "When I think of the goodness of God, my Father, when I think of His mercy." <sighs> When I think of his mercy, when yes. he didn't give me what I deserved, yeah. he gave me a pass. Yes. When I think of his grace, yes. when I think that he gave me what I didn't ask for, yes. when, 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 when I think about his patience, mm -hmm. how, how patient he has been with me. Now, I'm not talking about, talking about me because I'm focusing on those things that are good. When I think of his patience, even when I'm impatient with him, when I pray to him and I'm like, God, I need it right now, I need it right now, and I need, he's like, well, Stephen, I've been telling you to do You know what, Stephen, you would have it right now had you had you not, had you did what I told you to do three months ago, three years ago, you would have it right now, but I was patient. When I think about his patience and, and how he waits and waits and waits for us to make up our minds. Wow. When I think about all the other outcomes in life that mm. could have been, but he blocked it for me. Thank you for blocking it. Yes, Lord. When I think about all the parties I was at, the yes. guns were there, and drugs Hallelujah. were there, and alcohol yeah. was there, and STDs were there. And, and, when, I, when, when, when I think about all of that, uh -huh. and how I was in the midst of all of that, and who thinks just all around me. When I think about how, when I really, 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 really take time to count my blessings and 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 and, and, and name them one by one. Number one, I can never name them all. But number two, it inspires me. Yeah. It should inspire you to be yeah. better. Yeah. It should inspire you to do better. Yeah. It reminds me, and it should remind you just how valuable you are. Yes. Just how valuable you are to God because God invested his goodness in you and I for a reason. God sowed his goodness and his mercy and his grace in you and I for a reason. God sowed his, his compassion. He sowed his peace. He sowed his joy in you and I for the reason. And the reason is him loving us and wanting to be in right relationship with us as his children. He did all of that because he wants us to be his sons, his daughters, his children, and he wants us to have a sonship state of mind. He doesn't want us to live like slaves. He doesn't want us to feel like servants. He doesn't want us to believe we have to earn relationship with us. He just wants us to embrace it. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. He wants us to embrace it. Over and over and over again, God has proven that he is a good, good, good father. Yes. He's proven he's a good father by his treatment of us. And because he treats us like that, we should know without a doubt that we are his children. Yes. Who else would treat you so well That's right. in spite of yourself? Who else would wait for you with open arms even though you have been so disrespectful and so rebellious and so ignorant and so careless with your life and your choices? Who else but a parent? Mm. <laughs> Who else but a parent would still let you come back home even though after you messed up your life and messed over everyone? Yeah, who else but a parent would still receive you even after you rejected them Hallelujah. he's proven he is a good good father but what we have to do is we have to take that piece of information and understand that he's not a good good father to everyone he's a good good father to his sons he's a good good father to his children and that's the trigger that should help you to embrace the sonship state of mind 
Spend that time with the Father. Build yeah. that relationship with yeah. the Father. Build that relationship with the Father by building a relationship with his children as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm just about done, y'all. I was um, I was messaging Minister Reagan down in Texas. I was messaging, we were talking on the phone, messaging each other. And um, she and I, I told her about a situation. Some of y'all know me and um Minister Reagan, we met playing a video game online, actually. So we both play this game together still. It's just one of the things we do. And um, something happened in the group. And she saw it later when she got back home. And um, <laughs> I told her, I said, I knew when you saw what I said to everyone else in the group, I knew how you would respond. And, 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 and she said, I felt like this and I felt like that. And I said, I know. I said, because we know each other because we have a relationship. Mm -hmm. But she said, I also knew how you would respond and how you wouldn't go outside of who you are. Right. Because, uh -huh. because, I, because I know you, who you are outside of this world mm -hmm. and in eternity. Right. See, the only way you get to know God, you get to know him by reading the Bible, you get to know him by praying, but you also get to know him by the examples of his sons and daughters that lived before you. Mm -hmm. The reason why Jesus, being God, had to come to earth in the form of man is so we would have a blueprint yes. of what sonship uh, looks like. Right. What it actually, because we could talk about it, we could read about it, we could talk about it, but Jesus did the thing. Amen. He did the thing and documented the thing, so now we don't have to guess. Right. Amen. We don't have to. We do have to forgive those people who hate on us. Amen. We do have to turn the other cheek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We and, and, and guess what? Sometimes when people who are under our watch offend people, we have to make up for it. Like when Jesus had to kill the priest assistant, uh, assistants because Peter was out of control. Jesus had to fix that thing. That's listen, listen, listen. So, so even in sonship, as a child of God, having a mind of Christ, sometimes we have to make up for the mistakes of others. Right. Mm. There are some pastors and there are some preachers out there who have been bad representations mm -hmm. of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I take this moment to apologize for them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Don't count out every Christian. Right. Don't count out every Amen. pastor. Amen. Don't count out every apostle because you had a bad experience with some. They're fallible human beings. I'm a fallible human yes. being, but we try to do better. Amen. Sometimes you have to make amends for other people's transgressions. Isn't that what Jesus did on the cross? Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's, the more, he's the blueprint. He's the blueprint to show us. And he's the blueprint of sonship. Yeah. He showed us the sonship state of mind so that we can chase after it so that we can be triumphant and victorious the same way he is triumphant. A lot of times I can tell my wife what she's thinking. I can finish her thoughts. She, she Sometimes I get on her nerves with it. But, but the reality is the reason why I'm not looking at her right now. And the, real, the reality of why I can do that is because we spend time together. Yeah, amen, amen. We built a relationship together. Amen. I know how she thinks. I know how she's wired. I yes. know what she likes, what she doesn't like. I know what I can get away with. I know what I can't get away with. <laughs> uh, why would, and, and, and I think a lot of us have that experience with people. Why would you not think you can't have that experience with God just right, by doing the same good. thing? Uh, Spending, uh, building a relationship with yes, him. I, 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 I learn some things about my wife by what other people tell me mm. about uh, her. And then I get to discern it based upon how who I know her to be. Uh -huh. I, learn a lot of, I learned a lot about God from Bishop Pimpleton, mm -hmm. from Apostle Richie, from Elder Ronald Boyd, and a lot of the up from Bishop Hathaway, mm -hmm. from elders and, 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 and ministers, from, from other sons who told me about God. Yeah. Things, watch this, things that I didn't know about God, but they pushed me to inquire and yes. learn more about him. So I got to the point where I wasn't satisfied with what they knew about God. Yes. I wanted to know him for myself. Right. I wanted my own personal relationship Amen. with my dad. Yes. I, wanted, I wanted to know my father for me, yes. not for what someone else told me. Your dad was a great man. No, 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 no. Let, I can find out now. I don't have to settle for rumors and hearsay. I can get in his face myself. Because that is how you get the sonship state of mind. Mm -hmm. I said, last little piece I just want to say, and I'm done. And really, it's just a statement, and I'm done. God should be living 
rent free in our heads. Yes. Always. Yes. Amen. He should be living rent free in our head always. We have so many other things mm -hmm. living rent free in our head. Yeah. <laughs> that place should be reserved for God. Yes. yes. At Faith and Love, we sing that song, I'm sold out. My mind is made up. Yes. I'm sold out. My mind is made up. Mm -hmm. And a part of the song says, there's no room, no vacancy. I'm all filled up. I'm sold out. There should be no vacancy in our minds. Amen. No vacancies in our lives for any of the nonsense of anything else. I'm a son. You're a son. We're, child, we're children of God. We should be sold out. Our minds should be made up to be sons, to walk like sons, to embrace sonship and have the mind of Christ leading and guiding us in our decisions and our choices and our battles and Amen. overall victory in life every day. Put your hands together if you want